then I guess if we flatten them, they'll probably take up less space. So y'all, this is what I've been doing. Let's see. So I wonder how much, I wonder how much area these cover. Huh. So that was a pretty large Walmart box. I wonder how I could figure out hmm, how much area that box covered. I mean, I guess we could look at a smaller one. Here's some apple cinnamon tastios. Um, let's see. So I guess what I could do is I could find the area of this rectangle and this rectangle and this rectangle. I could add all of the sides, the area of all the sides together. And that would give me one figure. And that would be like the area of a flattened box. I think that's called surface area. It is, it is. And that is what this chapter is going to be about. Volume and surface area of several different solids. Would you like to see which ones? Yes. Or you're gonna see them regardless of whether you say yes or no. All right, so. is a rectangular prism and more specifically a cube and each of these they were rectangular prisms but they were solids I suppose they were boxes and they flattened out. Um, here is a triangular prism and another triangular prism kind of like a cylinder inside of a cylinder. So pretty. Uh, here we've got, there's a cone up here and found another cone. And a sphere. And a hemisphere. Hmm. All right, so I wonder if I could find the surface area of all of these. Let's see. This cone, I mean, it doesn't have a base, so we'd have to add on the base. So this one's kind of squished anyway, but you would have to add on a circle here. But if I flatten this out, I guess I could add that piece to the circle. Okay, um, cylinder. How would I find the surface area of a cylinder? Well, I guess I could represent it by, I could take this wrapper off. My kids like SpaghettiOs. I think they were out of SpaghettiOs, but I these spaghetti rings. I think they're probably just as good. Okay, so nope. look at that. Okay, well, I think they probably are. Okay, so there is the wrapper, and that wrapped all the way around. Okay, so that, there's that piece. So then I guess all we have left are the two bases, which are circles. So there's this piece, which is all around the circle. And all around the circle is the circumference. I bet this piece is the circumference of the circle times the height. That's that piece. And then, and then we just have to find the circle and the other circle. So like technically we could just like take this off and find the area. I guess I probably shouldn't turn it upside down. But anyway, there's those. Um, I forgot about one. Um, I couldn't find a pyramid. But if you look at this, I mean, obviously this isn't a pyramid, but if you look really close, this is a replica of Spaceship Earth at um, Epcot, at Disney World, which we were supposed to go to in May, but I don't think we're going. Um, but if you look really, really closely, there are a whole bunch of pyramids in um, on the surface of Spaceship Earth. So that's the closest I got, yeah, that's the closest I got to um, a pyramid. So anyway, this um, chapter, we are going to talk about all of these, this mess here, um, but all of those solids, we're gonna find the volume and surface area of each of those solids. And you'll have a really fun project to do with me. Hey guys. So I know you're all so excited to learn all these formulas. Okay, you're so excited. Remember rule number one, think positively. Okay, you guys can do this. Okay, so I'm gonna give you as many 
visual representations as I can. First rectangular prism. Yep, rectangular prism. You got this, guys. So, for the surface area of my rectangular prism, or my box of Tastios, I went without a formula this time. Okay, I just found the area of each piece. Okay, and the dimensions were 8 inches by 2 inches by 12 inches. So then I just found the area of each individual side. Okay, so we've got two 16s, two 24s, and two 96s. And this is how I came up with that. Okay, we've got two of the 8 by 12s, so that's two 96s or 192. Two of the 8 by 2s, which gives us a total of 32. And two 12 by 2s, which is a total of 48. Add them together. Next, we're gonna go with the triangular prism. All right, um, here's a triangular prism. Here's the net. Okay. Here are the dimensions of my triangular prism. Okay. And here's a net but for this one I thought I would show you um, the formula for the surface area of a prism and this works for rectangular also just sometimes it's easier to know how to get there than memorize a formula but it's up to you okay so surface area of any prism you take the perimeter of whatever the base is times the height and the height is whatever connects the two bases so in this case the height is six Okay, plus two times the area of the base. Okay, and the base is whatever shape you see the same thing um, on office, opposite faces. Okay, so these would be the triangles. Okay, so the surface area of this triangular prism is the perimeter of the base, and the perimeter of the base would be three plus four plus five, so that's 12, times the height, and we said the height is six, plus two areas of the base, and my triangle is three by four, so three times four is 12 divided by two, so that's six. So 12 times six is 72 plus my 12, and that gives us 84 square centimeters, okay? And if you wanted to do it the other way, where you just find the area of each piece and add it up, you get the same thing. Then we're gonna go to the cylinder. Cylinder, remember our SpaghettiOs? Okay, cylinder. All right, so the cylinder or the SpaghettiOs or spaghetti rings, we've got, yeah, I tried. We'll try harder. Never give up, that's rule number two. All right, so we've got our net. This is the actual net of the spaghetti rings, okay? So if you look at this, recall that this rectangular piece, it's like the circumference, and then we've got the two circles. So basically, you are just going to have a rectangle and two circles. And so for the cylinder, I'm gonna show you the formula, but you, again, you don't need to use the formula. I would recommend just thinking about this logically. Okay, it's two pi RH plus two pi R squared. Again, that, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it, Okay, you've got, um, we said we have this rectangle, and this is the um, circumference, okay? So the circumference times the height would give us this piece. So if you think about that, two pi r, that's the circumference times the height. Okay, that's that piece. You don't have to remember that, just do it. And then plus two pi r squared, that's because we have two circles, so two pi r squareds. Okay. And so um, if you think about it too, it's the same thing as the, the um, prisms because the perimeter of the base times the height would be the circumference times the height plus two areas of the base. So it's all the same thing. Okay, And so we're going to take 2 pi rh or 2 pi times 3 times 11 
plus 2 pi r squared or 2 pi times 3 squared, which is 66 pi plus 18 pi or 84 pi centimeters squared, okay, or approximately 263.89 square centimeters. All right, and then we've got um, the pyramid, okay, and remember the pyramid, I showed you some little pyramids in Spaceship Earth. Can you see those pyramids? Okay. All right, so pyramid, I've got a little pyramid on this here. Pyramid. Okay, so the pyramid, um, pyramid is kind of interesting because um, you can have whatever shape you want for the base. So right now this one, this is a square pyramid because the base is square, but you can have whatever um, shape you want in the base, okay? And so what that means is that if, um, say it's a triangular pyramid, then you'd have three triangles that would fold up and meet at the, at the point. If you have um, a, hexagonal pyramid, then you have a hexagon in the middle, and so then you have six triangles, okay? So that's how you do the um, surface area of a pyramid. And I really tried drawing this, but you guys don't know how that goes. But for the pyramid, you have to find uh, what's called the slant height. And the slant height is basically like the, um, the height of one of the triangular sides. So if you look at it at this way, it's the part that's perpendicular to the base. So maybe it's better here. The six, that's the slant height. Okay, so you need to know whatever your base is. You might have a square pyramid, you might have a triangular pyramid. Okay, but basically you're gonna have a bunch of triangles. And I'm gonna show you with the formula, and I'm also gonna show you um, just adding up all the sides. Okay, so the formula is like this. The surface area is equal to half times the perimeter of the base times the slant height plus the area of the base. There's only one base, okay? So I plugged it into the formula. Half times the perimeter of the base and the perimeter of the base is 20 because each side is five. Um, it's a square pyramid, I should have written that. It's a square pyramid, okay? Um, and then we're gonna take it times the slant height, which is six, plus the area of the base. So the area of that base is 25, okay? If you don't know the slant height, you'll have to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we will get into that later. Okay, and then down here, I also found the area of each piece. And if you add 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 25, that still gives you 85. Okay, so again, another one, you don't have to memorize a formula. It's up to you how you do that. All right, then we're gonna go with the cone. Cone, cone, cone. Here's another cone. Okay, I guess I could wear both, maybe. Hmm, I'm not sure. Mm. All right, so many, oh, but then you can't see that cone. There. Oh, there, okay, as many cones as possible. That will help us figure this out. Okay, all right, so if you look at the net of the cone, we've got this curvy little piece. Okay, do you see my cones? Okay. All right, so then um, we've got that part that you curl up and then the base. Okay, so you've got, again, just two pieces. And that brings us to our final calculation, the cone. Yay! All right, so if you know the pyramid, the cone is quite simple because it's basically the same thing. Okay, so I put the pyramid formula right underneath. Okay, so it's pi RL plus pi R squared. Now, um, the pyramid was one half times the perimeter. Okay, and half of the perimeter would be half of the circumference circumference is 2 pi r. So half of the perimeter of circumference would be pi r times the slant height plus b. Well, b in this case is a circle, so it's pi r squared. Okay, so again, one that you can think through logically. All right, so I just plugged it in here. Pi times radius, or 5 
times slant height, which is 10, plus pi times radius squared, pi times 5 squared. So we get 50 pi plus 25 pi, or 75 pi centimeters squared, which is approximately 235.62 square centimeters. You guys did it! This is about the hardest section of the quarter, so congratulations.